All right, everyone, I think we're going to get started with the uh, first seminar over here. So if there's anybody who wants to filter in a little bit, uh, you're welcome to take a seat. All right, so we'll, we'll just get started. So first of all, thank you all for coming to the expo today. Uh, I know it's really cold, so we're uh, happy to give you a nice place to sit down, chill, and uh, you know, learn more about life in Japan. Um, so today, we're going to do a quick roundtable discussion uh, with our panel of experts, uh, myself not included. Uh, <laughs> And uh, basically, we're just going to talk about you know, our experiences living in Japan, and then we'll open up the floor at the end uh, for some Q&A. Uh, everybody here has had you know, a really long history of living in Japan. They all have their areas of expertise, so I'll just open the floor to them and let them introduce themselves. Hello? OK, it's working. There you go. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Nathan. I am the service manager at uh, Gaijinpot at G Plus Media. I run both Gaijinpot Study and the Gaijinpot Housing Service, although we're not accepting tenants at the moment. Uh, later, if you want to get free calorie mate, find the Gaijinpot Study booth and talk to me, please. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Rachel. I work at the jobs department. I was born and raised in Japan, uh, mo ma mainly Tokyo, but also in Fukushima for my uh, high school years. Hi, my name is Heidi. I'm the editorial assistant for Gaijinpot Blog and Gaijinpot Travel. And I'm from the Philippines, and I've been living in Japan for three years. I, or, I originally came here as a language school student, and then I found work full time. Hi, guys. Uh, my name's Kevin. I'm the CEO of G Plus Media, operating Gaijinpot. And um, I've been in Japan about 23 years now, um, from New Zealand originally. I've taught English, been a recruiter, and worked in sales, and now uh, looking after this company. <laughs> And my name's Michael. I've been in Japan for about uh, eight years now, uh, originally from Columbus, Ohio. Um, yeah, so uh, we're really happy to have everybody here. So we'll jump right into it. So I guess the first question that we'll go with is, um, how did you find your first job in Japan? And I think everyone has the exact same answer. So we'll, we'll do this one. First. Oh, except for, except for Rachel. So. I, um, yeah, Gaijin Pot, actually. Uh, again, um, when I first came to Japan, I was teaching English. Uh, I worked at Model Language Studio, which is Kids Eikaiwa, and um, then moved throughout my career, uh, as I mentioned, into recruitment and then into sales. For me, I found my first part-time job in Japan using Gaijin Pot. I was originally a part-time restaurant staff, and then after that, further along the year, I found a part-time position open for an editorial intern, and yeah. That's how I got my foot in the door, and that's how I got my full-time job. Sorry, guys. Uh, so I took the traditional way. I graduated a Japanese university and went to a job fair like this and got the job. A very traditional Japanese way. Uh, all of my jobs in Japan were found on Gaijinpot. In fact, this isn't a joke. In college, when I was thinking of going to Japan, I wrote a note to myself that said, you can use this website to find a job in Japan. And it was Gaijinpot. And then I ended up working here. So it worked out very well. <laughs> uh, my answer is also the same. I, uh, my first job was through Gaijinpot. And then uh, the job at Gaijinpot was through Gaijinpot. So <laughs> it, I think it all worked out pretty well. Um, so on to the next one. Um, this is a popular question. So all these questions have basically been sourced not from us, but actually from the community. So we asked, um, you know, what are the things you guys are interested in? So we'll also open it up for Q&A at the end, though. Um, so this one is, so do you always need a bachelor's degree to find a job in Japan? OK, so first, regarding the bachelor's degree, you don't always need it. It is makes the process much, much easier. Um, most companies are going to be asking for that at the very beginning when you submit your resume. But it's not necessarily always a strict requirement. That's why events like this are good. So you can network and talk to the companies. If you know someone at the company, it's not always the case. Um, but really, the thing to note is it is kind of case by case. So don't just give up. Do still try, still talk to the company. But it is true that the bachelor's degree will make things a lot easier. Um, also, Typically, it is a requirement for visa, as maybe most of us are aware. So um, having a bachelor's degree will help you get your, um, uh, yep. <laughs> your, your working visa for a teaching um, specialist in humanities slash engineer. So typically, having a bachelor's degree is advantageous. Um, but to be completely honest, I actually had an associate's degree when I first came to Japan. And um, I ended up getting a job through um, the marriage route, actually. Um, 
after being with my partner for a long time in New Zealand. So there are other options out there as well, um, but you've just got to keep your eyes open. Yeah. So I would say the basics are, yeah, a bachelor's degree really helps, but there's always other options and routes. So, you know, take your time, look through um, some of the information that we have and then, you know, uh, go from there. So next question. Um, this is a really popular one, especially I think for people who are kind of transitioning in their careers. Um, how do you get a job that is not English teaching or how do you transition from teaching English to maybe doing something else? So one of the first things that you're going to want to do if you do want to find a job that's not in English teaching or move out of English teaching is improve your Japanese. Obviously, um, a lot of jobs for foreigners don't strictly require fluent Japanese. I am not fluent in Japanese. But when I did start off in English teaching, one of the first things that I did was really just focus on self-studying in Japanese and trying to get to that N2 level. Um, N3 level is conversational-ish for the JLPT, and you can get a lot of IT jobs. N2 is kind of where you can really start transitioning into different kinds of industries. So that can make a huge difference. But again, with many things, it's case by case. So talk to the company. So in my case, I had previous work experience in the Philippines in social media. And what I did was I leveraged that to companies that were similar here in Tokyo. And I was able to find a lot of internships and jobs that way. So if you have previous work experience that's kind of in a niche field, I would highly recommend that you leverage that in your job application alongside your Japanese language skill. Thanks, good. Okay. Um, so now we're going to transition out of the jobs a little bit and more into uh, like apartment hunting, living in Japan, basics, uh, things like that. So the first question here is, um, you know, how comfortably can you live in Japan on like a typical salary? So, you know, what is that like? Um, are there any tips, tricks or things that you can do to make your life living in Japan easier? Okay, well, for me, I started off with a very basic salary, so around 250,000 Japanese yen. And what I did was I looked for very cheap options, like I used a share house. And with all of these things, like you have to rem remember that it's really up to you on how you want to budget your money. You can still go out, you can still have fun, but there are a lot of budget-friendly ways to do it. Like there's so many public parks, you can get into biking. There are a lot of recreational activities that you can do. So 250,000 Japanese yen is not... Like, it's not too little, it's just about how you can stretch your budget. So yeah, that's how I was able to do it. Uh, yeah, I think I have a little input on that one for sure. So when I first came to Japan, I was a university student, so I was on a very, very fixed budget. Um, and I think that there's a lot of common misconceptions about, you know, Tokyo in particular is like a really expensive city. Like, how could you afford to live there? But I think surprisingly, you know, Tokyo can be quite affordable depending on, you know, where you look. You know, apartments further away from the station are a really great way to save money and get some exercise walking uh, or riding a bike. But, um, you know, learning to cook for yourself was something I had to go through uh, a lot. I expected, you know, to be eating out all the time in Tokyo, but uh, it didn't quite work out that way. So, you know, I think there's a lot of options and um, kind of Japan and Tokyo are what you make of it. So you can really spend a lot of money or you can live pretty cheaply. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, so this one is kind of related. So, um, you know, what is the average rent and initial costs for living in uh, Tokyo and living in Japan? Uh, so mainly focusing on Tokyo just because everything else in Japan is going to be below that, <laughs> of course. Um, if you're looking for just like a one-room standard apartment, like a decent, of decent quality, whatever that may mean to you, probably you can get an apartment in Tokyo for maybe 60 to 80,000 a month. But this is like a standard, decent quality um, apartment. You can find cheaper ones depending on the area, if it's further away from the station and you can get more exercise, for example. Uh, and it'll go up if you want like a one LDK. If you want like a living room, maybe around 100,000. For initial costs, it depends a lot on the room, but you're probably almost always going to be paying two things. Uh, the first is a deposit, which is going to be around one month's rent. You will maybe get part of that back, but it's not as it's kind of different from a lot of other countries. You probably may not get it back, so don't get too attached to it. And then a one month agency fee. So generally, I'd say think about like three to five, six months maybe worth of rent to move in in Tokyo. But again, varies a lot. Sometimes there's deals. In the busy season, it's a lot harder to get a deal. Uh, right now, you might be able to get you know, lower agency fees. So if you're looking for an apartment, now could be a good time, for example. OK. I think we're going to uh, move on to the next. I think we'll just move on to the next section now. So uh, this is more on study. Uh, and I think this one might be interesting, especially for people who are looking to uh, further their career goals. Um, 
do you think it is better to come to Japan as a university student or uh, to graduate with like a goal in mind uh, in your home country and then come to Japan? So I can answer that. Uh, so I don't know if it's better or not, but from my personal experience, I graduated a, a Japanese university, four-year university, and uh, it's hard to get in, but it's easy to graduate. And I did enjoy my university uh, campus life. Uh, there's uh, a thing called Circle. It's like uh, it's like a club that you can join. Uh, I also did part time, a lot of uh, part time, and you also have a lot of free time because it's easy to graduate. So uh, my senior year, I only went like once a week, every every uh, every uh, yeah, so every every week. So uh, yeah, it was pretty easy uh, uh, at the end. Uh, I know that Michael, you also have experience with uh, schools in Japan. Yeah, so like I said, um, originally I came to Japan as a university student um, at a Japanese university for a year study abroad, and then I actually went back to America and then uh, did a little bit of work there and then decided to come back to Japan for a graduate degree. And I would say that in my experience, the graduate degree really made a, a big difference because my undergraduate was in just the Japanese language. And I don't think that fully prepared me for the uh, you know job hunting experience in Japan with just the Japanese language. So I think Having some specialized skill um, and getting some work experience in the States uh, definitely helped. But I think that the working experience, particularly in Japan, uh, after getting the graduate degree was what made the difference. So um, from my perspective, I think uh, focusing on the career path that you want to follow while gaining Japanese language skills was probably uh, the best. So whether you do that as a graduate uh, or undergrad, I think just having that clear path is what makes the most sense. All right, I think we're gonna end with a kind of a fun one and then move to some Q&A from the crowd. So, um, let me just use this mic. I think this mic's better. Um, so this one is, what is your favorite town slash city to live in Japan and why? So this was maybe more of a debate than a, a question. Okay, I can start. Tokyo, for sure, for me. The food uh, here is amazing, so no doubt, Tokyo. Um, yeah, I would also agree that Tokyo is quite nice, but um, I think a lot of people miss out on other towns that are that provide a totally different experience. Like, for example, Kanazawa. It's a very beautiful city on the coast of the Sea of Japan, and they have the freshest seafood, and it's very, very small and very, I think, very easy to live because you can actually walk the entire town. So if you're into more community-centered vibe, then that would be a good place to go. But definitely for job options, it's mostly in Tokyo or big cities. Or Osaka. Or Osaka. Uh, yeah. Uh, I will differ. I mean, Tokyo is still great, obviously. We're here right now. Uh, but I am a big fan of Chiba, right next door. You get all the benefits of traveling to Tokyo at any time. It's really close. You can come in like 30 minutes. But it's a lot more peaceful. Uh, the rent is lower. You still get you know, all the restaurants you could want. And you're more kind of immersed in the culture, different from being in Tokyo. Uh, also, I haven't lived here, but I went to Kagoshima, which is in the very south of Kyushu. Um, a few months ago, and it seems very awesome, and I would love to have the opportunity to live here, live there, so you should also look into there. It's very cool. Okay, for me, actually, uh, I live, used to live close by Nathan, actually, in Chiba. <laughs> so, uh, Chiba, 18 years, and yeah, it was amazing. Um, a lot of chances to come into Tokyo. I was working every day in Tokyo, so um, it wasn't as expensive as, as, as living in, like, Minatoku, um, but I've also lived in Minatoku as well, so... Um, I mean, they've all got their pros and cons, but I, I'm a small, a small country guy, so yeah, Chiba, uh, specifically I was in Kashiwa, was great. I will personally make the case for Kanagawa. Uh, I live in uh, Odawara right now, so uh, kind of almost middle of nowhere, but I really, really like it. It's, uh, you know, farms and kind of countryside living. So I lived in Tokyo for a while, but uh, moving out into the countryside has done wonders for my level of stress. So I highly recommend uh, the small town life in Japan if possible. Yeah, so I think uh, now we'll open it up for some quick Q&A. We got about um, five or so minutes. So if anybody has any questions, um, now's the time and I'll just uh, walk out and uh, give you the mic and uh, our panel of experts will do our best to answer. So any questions? Don't be shy, come on. Anything. Well, not anything, but you know, within reason, there we go. Hello, good afternoon. 
I'm a physical therapist by profession. Hello? Yeah, now? I'm audible? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm a physical therapist by profession. I have done my physical therapist in India. I'm a native English speaker. After coming to Japan, I got married, and after coming to Japan, I just thought that language was a big barrier for my profession. So I learned Japanese and passed JLPT N3. So, but still then, I'm not able to find a perfect kind of job. Because everywhere I go, they say, you need an experience, you want, you, we want experience, we want experience. So I'm just curious to know what kind of job I can do, being a physical therapist, being a native English speaker, plus knowing Japanese and three. So what kind of job is I can get? Thank you. OK, so I mean, physical therapy is a very, it's quite a specific field. Um, of course, there's avenues within different um, companies like gyms or um, healthcare uh, industry. Now, what we've found over the last couple of years, well, actually over the last, I've been doing this for about 11 years now in recruitment uh, in Japan, and number one is networking. Get out there and meet the right kind of people in the right kind of places. And there are opportunities through the foreign chambers of commerce to encounter different, different um organizations that are hiring within the specific field you're looking for, um, but they are still few and far between. Um, N3 is a great start, but also for working in this field as well, um, you're working with the public. So having a slightly higher level of Japanese is also very good as well. So keep practicing <laughs> your Japanese and having that N2 will greatly enhance the opportunities that you would need to be able to um, get in this area. The other thing would be, of course, job boards are great. Um, LinkedIn, of course, <laughs> we're promoting Gaijinpot today, but also recruiting agencies, um, finding specific recruiting agencies that can then have the contacts to be able to uh, promote your skills to the right people is also very important, which comes back into that networking, which I was talking about earlier. And um, there's so many events in Tokyo, so many meetups, so many professional opportunities that you can go to. Um, I'd definitely take advantage of this. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I think we have time for maybe one or two uh, short questions. There we go. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Alberto, and uh, I'm an Italian chef. Uh, I came here with a uh, uh, tourist visa because it was the unique visa I could use to come here. And uh, I, I wanted to ask if it's possible like, to, to find a job anyway and uh, like exchange the tourist visa uh, with a working visa while I'm here or I, I have to come back to my country to make another visa. And uh, I didn't find so many information on internet and I really like to, to find a job in a restaurant or in a hotel here. Uh, I did like three months of school here in Tokyo, so my level is around JLPT N4, and, uh, and yeah, I'm trying to figure out how, how to find something uh, in, uh, in here. So, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so I think I can help with this one uh, a little bit. So it will depend on your particular country's uh, agreement with Japan for how the visa itself works. Okay. However. Um, Coming in on a working tourist visa and then changing over to a regular working visa typically does require a COE, so a certificate of eligibility. Mm -hmm. So you would need to meet the requirements for the COE for that position. So um, the first step would be to talk to you know prospective employers mm -hmm. and then find out what the requirements are for actually gaining employment there. Okay. And then once you have an idea of that, you can actually talk to them and then begin the process for acquiring the COE. Now, whether that requires you to return to your home country once um, before coming back into Japan to get the visa stamped mm -hmm. or the visa changed over, that is a strong possibility. It, oftentimes, it does require you to leave mm -hmm. and come back. But the actual turnaround time, um, once you have the COE, may be quite short. So I knew, know that some people have been able to you know, basically secure employment, leave for like a week or two, and then come back in with the new, you know, stamped visa and documents. But okay. typically, that's the path you would have to take. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Okay, yeah, I think we're just about out of time now. So um, 
We've got about uh, 10 minutes break before the next uh, seminar. So we'll just wrap up here. Um, be sure to stop by for the next seminar. It's going to be a crash course on permanent residency. So, you know, the next step after the visa is permanent residency for a lot of people. So it should be very interesting. So, um, you know, please feel free to come in, take a quick break, uh, and then come back for that one. And uh, definitely take a look at all the booths out there. So thank you very much for coming. And, uh, you know, please enjoy the expo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gus.